Listen up. Your customers, our listeners, could be hearing about your business right now. Yeah, right now. Don't miss out on the opportunity to advertise with NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. Call our business department today at 504-475-4793 to hear about our great rates. NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. We provide the people, you provide the business. Nobody gives you better conversation about your quality of life. Let everyone know you listen to the New Orleans, the New Orleans, the New Orleans Talk Network. Central Standard Time and 12 noon Eastern Standard Time to the New Orleans Talk Network with Faith That Works, which are encouraging Coach Miss Jill. And I want to thank you all who have their people downloading the app and continue to have someone to download the app, New Orleans Talk Network. I'll go to your computer and go to www.NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com and have someone to hear the word of the Lord. So we've been talking about our Father, which art in heaven, and trying to get through the guideline of the Our Father prayer. And let you know that the Our Father prayer is not something that we just sing, Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. We're going to get to thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're going to get to the God line of thy kingdom will come on the second half of this program. But we left off last week. Um, distinguishing between the two fathers, either God going to be your father or Satan going to be your father. Now, God is the father, uh, the first person of the Trinity. God is our father, which is in heaven. So when we say when we go to our father, which are in heaven, what we're doing, we are recognizing him and we are recognizing and acknowledging where he is. So when you was born into a family, your parents had a house for you and you had guidelines and you had rules and they raised you up as their child. So when we became born again, we are the children of God. So that was Jesus' purpose to reconcile us back to the Father. And that's given the Father legal access through us, working through us, out of the kingdom, he can come down. The kingdom of heaven have already came down in the form of Jesus Christ. So uh, God is our father, and we said that he's, he wants full custody. He don't want joint custody. He just don't want weekend visits. He wants you to visit him daily. He wants you to talk to him daily, acknowledge him daily. He wants to communicate with us. You that are saved and you that are not saved, um, you can get saved today, and you could be translated from the kingdom of darkness unto the kingdom of light, which is in heaven. So um, Satan is the father of the world. Um, and the Bible says that, uh, he says, Satan is the father of the world, and God would not share you with the father, because he's a, that with the worldly father, with the devil, because he's able well able, more than able, to take care of you. So John 8, I like to give scripture because the Bible says that um, the word of God, there's a famine in the earth. 
But it's not a famine for food, nor for thirst, for water. But it's a famine for hearing the words of God. In the beginning, God said, let there be. And it's the word of God. It's the seed that is in your heart that you speak out of your mouth going to produce what we need. So just to recap, John 8, 44, uh, it says that you are of your father, the devil. That's what Jesus was telling them. Because if you go to the 40th verse, they say, but now you speak to kill me. That's what Jesus said because they wanted to kill him. He said, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You are, and ye do the deeds of your father. So we're doing the deeds of the world. He says, uh, then said there to him, we are not born fornicators. We have one father, even God. And Jesus said unto him, if you were your father, you would love me. For I proceed forward and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. God sent Jesus into the world. For God so loved the world, he gave. He sent his only begotten son. And then he says, um, why do not you understand my speech? That's John 8, 43. Even because you cannot hear my word. Are ye of your father the devil? And the lust of your father you will do. For he was a murderer from the beginning and aborted not in the truth. He didn't even abide in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is the father of liars. So the Bible says that we will know our, uh, uh, our fruit. We would know um, who we belong to if we are lined it up and if we are in the word of God and if we will be a doer of the word. So the Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth is our instruction manual once we come into Christ and it gives us instructions how to live and how to be a child of God. Now, um, let's get back to the prodigal son. We said last week that the parable was the prodigal, uh, the dad had two sons. And the younger son went to his father and says, give me what belongs to me that I may go off and live my life. So he went off to live, and his father divided in half, and he gave him his portion. So he left his father's house. And then when he left his father's house, he went out and r rotten his living. I mean, the way the world lived. He just spent up everything he had. And I wanted you to remember that long as he had money, and long as he was pleasing the people, see, the world have a hoodwink spirit. It will drain you dry, spin up everything you have. And then when you don't have any more, they kick you to the curb. Well, that's what happened to him. As long as he had money, he had women, he had friends, he was drinking, he was partying. See, that's what the world would do, and that's what Satan would do. It'll help you climb up a tree. And when you get up that tree, say, hey, 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 are you up there? Yeah. Hey, look down. And when you look down, he got a, a saw, a jigsaw ready to saw them limbs from underneath you so you can fall flat. So the son, he was a son of the father, and the father loved his son. And the father did not run behind him and went after him. But the Bible said he spent all he had, and the friends and everyone kicked him to the curb, didn't even let him come in to uh, eat with them or lay his head. They sent him out to the swan, the hogs, the pigs. Told them, go feed the swan, eat with the swan, live out there in the dirt, live out there. And then when he did that and realized what he had done, he didn't have pride. He looked down and the Bible scales removed off his eyes and he came to himself. And he said, my father, servants, eat better than this and they have food to spare. He said, I will get up and go back to my father. And he made up his mind. He said, I'm no worthy to be his son. 
He said, but I will go back and say, I'll be your servant. Well, the father did not go run behind him. What the father did, he expected. So whatever going on in your life, you are father or mother, whatever, and your children or your family or everything going haywire, don't give up. Because if you believe in God and if you pray and you say, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, thy kingdom come in my child life on earth as it is in heaven. And in heaven, is there rottenness living? No, there's peace. In heaven, is there sickness? No, there is healing. In heaven, is there poverty? No. In heaven, is there uh, fear, doubt? No. So come kingdom, will of God, be established in my life on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, we get into that love. We're going to get back to it. Thy kingdom come on earth. That's our topic today. As it is in heaven. So the father, he looked up and saw his son coming home. And the Bible says that when you read it in this John Luke 15 chapter, um, he said he, he looked up and he saw his son from afar. And he, the father, ran to him and kissed him, hugged him. Because he was in expectation that one day, my son coming back. He just didn't give him the money and just let him just do that. He had and kept him in his heart. And that's what I want you to do today. Whatever you believe in God for and whatever God said that is yours and you know what is yours, you take it back with prayer. And you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And you believe in your heart and believe that you receive. One day that they will come back or whatever the situation is. And then he went to him and he says, hey, I'm no, wor no longer worthy to be called your son. The dad didn't want to hear that because once you are born in a family, that blood is running through your veins. And you are a child of your parents. So once you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are his son and his daughter. Because Jesus came and he reconciled us back through that cross. So what I said, the preaching of the cross is foolish to them that believe, don't, don't believe, but unto us is the power of salvation. So the father told the servant, he coming back to be a servant, but he, the father didn't listen to that. But he spoke to his servant. The father did have servants. And he told them, he says, I want you to put a fine robe. Put the kill the fat of cap, put a ring on his thing. That's a signet ring. That's a signal to let people know, hey, this is my son. Don't mess with him. This is my son. He's royal. And when God, we come to God, God put his spirit within us. God put a robe over us. He gives us the fatty calf. He gives us the finest things in life. We just have to learn how to receive it and get that servant mentality mind away from us and receive what God has done and become that son and daughter of Christ. So he was happy that his son, he said, my son was lost, but now he's found. So he came back. And you that's coming back to God, just like I said last week, you may have been one that molested your children, or you may have been one that been molested in your own days, or you may have been one that been mental and physical abused. But I want you to know today, come to Jesus, and he will turn it around. And guess what? He casts everything we've done and everything that has been done to us, he cast it into the sea of forgetfulness so it will not be remembered against you anymore. So when you come to Jesus, you make up your mind, guess what, and, and accepted him as Lord and Savior. You are a son and a daughter of God. But then we have to forgive. Let me tell you something. Now, they got forgiveness in our Father prayer, too. But I'm going to skip on to our, uh, Matthew 6, and I want to show you something in that 13 and, um, no, that 14 and that 15 verse, talking about forgiveness. He told me I, last week I, I, I didn't touch on it, and I should have. I had you hanging out there when I was saying and what you have done and everything. But let me let you know one thing. The mercy of God, the grace of God have forgiven you. 
You forgive the perpetrator. You forgive if you was the perpetrator. You forgive because God is turning the heart of the fathers back to their children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Mothers, sisters, brothers, whoever it is. I'm just sticking with father right now, but you know the whole picture. You may not have a father. And stop beating yourself up. But God said, hey, I'm here. Come to me. And I will love you. And you will ever forget. You know you had one because that's the only way you got into the world because he had to plant seed. They may call y'all women, may tell my my baby daddy and all this, but that's their dad. But look what he said. So today I want you to forgive, and then we're going to finish off the other elderly son so we can know how to get rid of envy and jealous. Be happy when your sister or brother come home. He said, for if you forgive people, that's Matthew 6, 14, if you forgive people, and I'm reading out of the Amplified, of their trespasses, their reckless and willful sin, leaving them, letting them go, and giving up resentment, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So you want forgiveness? Peter said, how many times you forgive a person for one thing? He said, seven times seven. Jesus said, seven times 70. 490 times for one little thing. Forget it. Let it go. Cast it in, away from you. And then he said, but if you do not forgive others of their trespasses, letting them go and giving up resentment, neither will your father forgive you of your trespasses. So no matter what it is, let it go. Please let it go. Let it go. Come to Jesus, and he'll make everything new for you. Hallelujah. Now, we ended up on that Luke 15, 25. Now, the elderly son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing, pottering, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come home. And that father killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound. And he was angry. He was upset. He should have been excited to hear that news. But these are the church folks today. These are us that been in the world, the word for a long time. These are the ones that go to church every day, every Sunday, every time the doors open. These are the ones don't pick up their Bible through the week, but on weekends. And I told you, God just don't want weekend visits. He want full custody. He want a relationship, a fellowship with you. And if we was to fellowship with God when one of our sisters or brothers come into the, to the light and be reconciled back to God, the reason why Jesus came upon the earth, we wouldn't have envy and animosity and jealousy and, in our heart and hatred. Body of Christ, it is time out for that because you're standing in the way of people that want to come into the Lord want to come into it. And the 28th verse in that Luke 15 say he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. So his father went to him. He called his father out. Come out here. His father went out there and 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 he and uh he answered and said to his father. He acted he said, "Lo, these many years do I serve thee." Neither transgressed at any time thy commandment. I did, I, I did everything you wanted me to do. And yet thou never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son, he didn't even say my brother, he said, as soon as thy son came home, he said, you devour, and he devoured his living with harlots and and you kill for him the fat of calf. He had to throw up. And that's another thing God wanted me to bring up. Stop throwing up somebody past to their face. Once they have asked Jesus to forgive them and they done turn away. Repentance means turn away. Turn away from. And he turned away from it. You is not up to us. He says, the Bible says that um, when a brother is overtaken in the fault, you which are so spiritual, restore. Restore, there go our word, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness unless you be tempted yourself. You don't know what life holds for you. You don't know where you may turn back. 
So restore such a one and, and ask God to create in you a clean heart and renew a righteous spirit within you. That's what David did. David was the king, and David had received a wife, husband killed so he could have her. And his servant went to him and said, told him of what he did, and David didn't say, because I'm king. I can do what I want. David said, create in me a clean heart and renew a righteous spirit within me. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. And then he said, and restore unto me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with a free spirit. He said, then I can teach transgression thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto you after you restore me. David had lost his joy. And maybe you today been gone to church, just like I said before. We could go to church, put the keys in the door. We could mop the floor. We could just be there early, everything. But going to church without having a clean heart and without letting letting the Lord live through you, you could go to church and sit in church, but sitting in church don't make you no more than a Christian than you sitting in a garage will make you a car. You could sit in that garage all day. That don't say you're, you're a car. You just sitting in the garage. You can sit in church, but ask God to create in you a clean heart. And when one come into the Lord, don't be like this elder son. Hatred, jealousy, envy, greed. He just thought because the boy was gone and if dad was to die, the rest of it was going to belong to him. But that boy came back and the dad had more than enough. And I want you to know that God have more than enough. It ain't too many that could come to God and God ain't going to be able to take care of them. God is a father and he pays child support. He supports his children. So, and then he said, as soon as your son come home, which had devoured his living with haulers and killed him for the fatted calf, and he said unto him, son, this is what the dad told him, son, thou art ever with me and all that I have is yours. And that's what God is saying today. You who've been serving all your life, start looking at yourself as a son and a daughter, a child of God. And everything that our father have belongs to us. We just have to know that the kingdom of God is within you. And then he said unto him, all that I had is yours. And he went, and it was meet that We should make merry and be glad for thy brother was dead and is alive again and lost and now is found. So, you who that been hurt, misused, and abused, and you may have been in church, uh, in Christ, and gone to church all your life and been abused and misused, ask Father to forgive them and you turn your back and go back to the Father. I'm not saying go back and... to religion, I said, go back to God and say, Father, here am I. You who have never came in, I want you to know that his arms is stretched wide. Jesus died for you, and he came to reconcile you back to him. And he's saying today, thy kingdom come on earth. Our Father, you could cry out and say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come on earth in my life as it is in heaven. Get free today. Come to Jesus. I want to give you a chance because I didn't last week. We ran out. But I want to take this time to ask anyone who have been strayed away, who are uh, in, in Christ now and still in prison in your mind, still in prison. That's what Isaiah 42, 22 said, in prison. And bound up, prison in your body, prison in your finance, prison, hell bondage. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Because let's see what's in heaven. In heaven, there's healing. In heaven, there's no sorrow. In heaven, there is no poverty alike. In heaven, there's no sickness. 
in heaven there is no fear. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And the kingdom of God did come on earth through the form of Jesus Christ and living on the inside of you. When we get into that, the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but it's righteousness, it's joy, it's peace in the Holy Ghost. So I want you to know today, whatever you need, you come to Jesus. Come, come to Jesus while you have time. He will make your life brand new. He will surely see you through. I say, come, come to Jesus. Make up your mind. Hallelujah. You fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, sinners, saints, whatever you've done, it's nothing too hard for God. He's your father. He ready to throw the finest robe upon you. He ready to let you walk out in the best. You are the one that's supposed to be wearing the best. We are the one. He ready to put that ring on your finger. He ready to give you that car to drive. He ready to give you that home, that kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. He ready to give you peace. He have already did it. Stop praying the prayer, Lord, heal me. Lord, save me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, Jesus said, I'm not coming back on that cross to heal, save, deliver nobody else. I did it once. And I said, it is finished. And you receive. Believe and receive what he's already done. It is yours. And if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior, say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. And I do believe that you are the Son of God and that you came. And I confess you with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And with the heart man believe unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Ask Jesus, say, come. He said, whosoever will, let him come. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall, he didn't say might, he said, shall be saved. With your heart, man, believe, believe in your heart unto righteousness. And with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And everyone who's been, been um, rebuking and downing and judging others, the ones that been in, get rid of the judgmental uh, attitude. Get rid of it because God is bringing them in capable, willing, and available to work, to live out of the kingdom. As I said, come to Jesus. Make up your mind. And when we come back off of this break, we will be going to thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, all who came to Jesus and your sisters and brothers that came back, I want you, wherever you at, begin to rejoice because the Bible says heaven is rejoicing over one. So guess what? That's why he tell the shepherd, he say, when, when, if you got 100 sheep, leave the 99 and go back and get that one. Well, on this one, that one came back, but the father was expecting him. And Father God is happy today because you are forgiven. Don't fall into condemnation because grace is sufficient for you, and he already did it. So you are listening to Faith That Works on the New Orleans Talk Network. We're going um, for uh, a break, and I want you all to come back happy and joy to listen to the second half. We're going to get through this guideline, maybe not all today, but I want to thank you all for tuning in. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We'll be back shortly.
But that's the house of prayer. But that is a church for non-traditional worshipers. A church designed for those who love God's word. Would you like to attend a church where believers and non-believers can choose to worship together? A church where cultural differences does not get in the way of God's gifts. We invite you to be our special guest. Our services begin 9 a.m. on Sunday. Located at 7601 West Bank Expressway, Sweet B, Morero, Louisiana. For more information, contact us at 504-348-0132. Are you looking for an alternative to conservative? Real Brother Radio is now on New Orleans Talk Network every day, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. New Orleans Talk Network. We provide the topics, you provide the conversation. This is Tanya Free. Some Republican leaders have condemned newly leaked comments by Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump, who bragged about groping women in a 2005 recording obtained by the Washington Post. Other GOP leaders have even called for Trump to step aside for the sake of the party. What's your take? Is this the end of the road for Donald? The Tanya Free and Friends Talk Show. Your destination for the best in social and political straight talk. Wednesdays, 2 p.m. Eastern. You wanted that phone, and the answer was no. You needed that car, and the answer was still no. Your family liked that apartment, but they said no again. They even turned you down for the job you were qualified for, all based on a bad credit report. Your credit can be restored. Call Bethesda Community Development Corporation at 504-348-0132. Don't allow a bad credit report to hold you back any longer. Call BCDC at 504-348-0132. Happy Merry Mondays. It's your girl, Mary J. I want you to tune in with me to Real Talk with Mary J on New Orleans Talk Network every Monday morning at 10 a.m. Then follow me to blogtalkradio.com slash realtalkwithmaryj at 10 p.m. It's going to be a Merry Monday every Monday at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. You've just tuned in to New Orleans Talk Network. Hi, I'm Linda Lewis, Director of Armstrong Family Services. I'm here to remind you that anyone can become homeless, even you. Armstrong Family Services is a nonprofit organization that serves families in crisis. We focus on keeping homeless families together. Post Katrina, we have helped over a thousand families. Now we need your help. For more information, please call 504 899 2995. Back. I'm popular the man. Are y'all ready for this tea? The New Orleans Talk Network has all the behind the scenes info, gossip, and happenings in the world of Hollywood. You gotta tune in to Dishing with Christian on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on the New Orleans Talk Network.com. I got my in my bag swag. This is the Reverend D. Jones. And Charles Stewart. We will be coming to you live every Monday, 11 to 12 noon, on New Orleans Talk Network, hosting a new show, A Church Without Walls. The church is us, and the church is you. We are a church with no boundaries. Stay as long as you want, leave when you want. Remember, every Monday, 11 to 12 noon, tune in to a church with no wall. Don't you dare miss it. At Jones Insurance, we find that peace of mind offers a real advantage. That is why we work hard to make things easier for you by protecting your cars, your homes, your businesses, and your life. Peace of mind, isn't that the best protection? Learn what insurance can do for you. Call your agent at 504-348-1492 or visit us at 7603 West Bank Expressway, Morero, Louisiana. This is Remus Bowman. Join me live Mondays at 12 o'clock on the New Orleans Talk Network. You can also join me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, we're all over the place. We're going to open doors for you to have an opportunity to be successful and pay low interest for your automobile, your home, your credit cards, everything that you buy. We're going to put you on a great path 
to have a successful future. Every Monday at 12 o'clock, Remus Bowman for you and your credit. New Orleans Talk. Wax Food and Culture at 1601 Plaza Drive in Marrero. Always delivering the best food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There's a reason why people keep returning to Wags. The food's always hot, great portions, and it's just down-home good. Call ahead to order in advance at 504-348-3080. That's 504-348-3080. And let Larry know that you heard about Wags on the New Orleans Talk Network. Call them now. Wags Food and Culture at 1601 Plaza Drive in Marrero. Nobody gives you better conversation about your quality of life. Let everyone know you listen to the New Orleans, the New Orleans, the New Orleans Talk Network. Hi, I'm Jill Samuels, host of Faith That Works, here to let you know to visit the New Orleans Talk Network YouTube channel and please subscribe today. Welcome back to Faith That Works with your encouraging coach, Miss Jill, on the New Orleans Talk Network. And we're getting into thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Now, to have a kingdom, in a kingdom, you have a king and you have a queen. Or it could be just a king or a kingdom could be someone with just a queen. But the kingdom is a place. And it's a place where you live. And our king, our fathers, have a kingdom of heaven. And to know what's in heaven, you have to get in his word and go to Revelation. I know people were saying, don't be reading the book of Revelation. This book, ah, oh, hogwash. Read it all because God is there. And that's how you're going to learn about the kingdom. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Now, Matthew 6, 9, we done went to the, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We recognize the way he is. He said, thy kingdom come and thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Well, we know the kingdom of heaven, Jesus was in heaven and he came on earth and he living on the inside of us. So where is the kingdom of heaven? What is the kingdom of heaven? When Jesus came, he gave us keys to the kingdom. And look what Matthew 6, 33 said. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things be added. Stop seeking God for things. Seek after the kingdom. What is to, to fill the kingdom? We are an ambassador of the kingdom of God once you come into Christ. So there is instructions. We have to know what's in the kingdom. We have to know that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, it's joy, it's peace in the Holy Ghost. And look what Mark 1 and 14 says. Uh, I want to go uh, to the, uh, it says that now after that, John was put into prison and Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. We have to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. And so the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. He said, repent ye and believe the gospel. So the kingdom of God is at hand, and that's what he told the disciples. He said, uh, go as you go, say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Whatever is in heaven have a right for you to call down and pull it down on earth in our lives because we are an ambassador. Just like the prodigal son dad did, he put a robe on his finger, a, a ring on his finger, a robe on his back. Gave him the best. So you have the
See, see, he came that you could have life and have it more abundantly. So when he took his place, he took that. They asked him, he said, are you a king? Jesus is the king. See, in the world, we have kings and queens. We have, and in the world system, is a Burger King. They say, Burger King, have it your way. Hold the pickles, hold the lettuce. But let me tell you one thing. In the kingdom of God, we have a bloody king. We don't have a Burger King. We have a bloody king. Jesus shed his blood to redeem, to purchase, to buy you back. So you could have life and have life more abundantly. So therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So because of the blood of Jesus. So it's no, in the kingdom of heaven, it's no have it your way. It's God's way or no way. But you got to know what God said to do. I'm going I'm to slide off. I see why he had me to open this beef after the break. I want you to go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Bible. So when you become the God, see, we have to, uh, uh, Romans 12 and 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, his reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How your mind going to be renewed through the word of God? By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that perfect and acceptable will of God. So this is your instruction manual. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. This is the will of God. The Bible is the will of God. And the only time you can summon to the reading of a will is somebody had to die first. And Jesus died, so you are in the will. But you have instructions. And the lawyer gives you instructions what you have to do to receive what you have to receive. And the grace of too hard for God. He already did it, and his grace is sufficient for you. But he had wanted me to read the 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. It says, therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creature, a new creation altogether. The old previous morals and spiritual condition has passed away. And behold, the fresh and new has come. But all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, received us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself. with himself, not counting up and holding against man their trespasses, but canceling, he canceled it, y'all, canceling them and committing to us the message of reconciliation of the restoration and favor. So we are Christ's ambassadors, God making his appeal as it were through us. We, as Christ's personal representative, beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor now offered you and be reconciled to God. For our sake, he had made Christ uh, to be sin who knew no sin, so that in and through him we might become endured with viewed as being in examples of the righteousness of God, what we ought to be approved and acceptable in right relation with him by his goodness. So therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things will pass away, and behold, all things become new. 
And that's when Jesus went to that cross to reconcile us back to God. So we are sons and daughters of God. And I want you to know the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink. That's what Romans 14 and 17 say. For the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And I want you to know that the kingdom of God is within you. Look at Luke 17 and 20 and 21. It says, and when they had the man of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come. He asked them, when is the kingdom of God coming? And he answered them and said, the kingdom of God come not with observation. But neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. When you accepted Jesus Christ, Jesus came within you. And then he sent you the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, the kingdom of God is living on the inside of you. And Ephesians 1 and 3 said, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. See, we are already seated in heavenly places in Christ because Christ is living on the inside of us. So we're supposed to look at our situations from a heavenly uh, standpoint instead of looking up and looking at it from a world standpoint. Everything belongs to us. It has already been done. And then that fourth verse says, according to that, he had chosen us in him. God, chosen us in him. Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him. In love. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. In him. The kingdom of heaven in us. It's on earth. Now we have to learn how to operate out of it. I wrote this down and said, you see, it's like a car. Okay, we'll look at God our Father as the car, covering us. He's the car. And then Jesus gave us the keys to the kingdom. So he said, whatsoever we, keys is a sign of authority. So we take the key and we get in the car, but Jesus is in the seat because we are living in him. So God is the car. He's covering us, protecting and everything. We are sitting in the car in Christ Jesus. But then he downloaded the Holy Spirit, our GPS system. So the GPS is going to tell us and guide us and lead us and tell us which way to go. So just like you have a computer. And when it's time for uh, uh, to download something and, and you go to download this new app or you go to download your updates, because you got to be updated, and that's what the Holy Spirit do. You download the updates, and then they said, memory full, no more space. That's because you didn't get rid of the old. But to get to the new, we have to delete the old. We can't keep holding on to the old. For therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. So we have to delete the old for the download and to update and for the GPS system to guide and to lead. Therefore, if you in Christ, delete the old. Get rid of it and let the Holy Spirit, you are in the driver's seat in Christ, seated in Christ. Jesus is in there, but the Holy Spirit is the GPS. It tells you what road to take and what road not to take. That's like Nicodemus came to God. He said, how can a man be old and enter into his mother's womb? He said, Jesus said, you must be born again, born of the water and of the spirit. That which is flesh is flesh, but that which is spirit is spirit. You must be born again. And to be born again, we got to go back to Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, and I am the truth, and I am life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. And he said, I'm going to send you a comforter. That's your GPS system. Because Mark 11 and 13 said, enter into the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction, and many there be which thereon. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and a few you find thereon. 
I was traveling on the road and I exit off the wrong exit and I know I haven't seen all this scenery before and my heart started beating fast. I said, oh Lord, I'm lost. I'm lost. I said, oh, I'm lost. And I started getting nervous and then I just kept going straight and I said, Holy Spirit say, make a U-turn. Turn around. And that's what the Holy Spirit is saying today. You may be on the broad and wide road, but thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. You can make a U-turn. He said, you turn. Don't tell him to turn. Don't tell him that what you're going to do. You turn to the way that he wants. I know when um, in 2006, my granddaughter, she was about five or six years old, and I went to visit her. She says, Mama, I had this dream. And I says, uh, what's the dream, baby? She said, I had this dream. It was you, Mama Shirley, uh, my dad, my mom, and we was this angel came and told us to get in this straight line and don't don't get out. And they brought us to this big old this place and they had two doors. And they said we was in a straight line and we just had to stay in that straight little narrow line and the door that we had to go through, she said, Mama, it was so narrow till you had to turn sideways like a sheet of paper to get in that door. And then she said, but she wanted to get out of that line and she wanted to go and get in because she saw that big old pretty gate. And she kept saying, boy, I wonder what's going back there. And she saw so many people going back there. And she said she started to get out the line to go jump over there. And then she said, oh, my mom turned sideways like a sheet of paper. She got in, her dad, her mom, and it was her turn. She said, ooh, ooh, So she turned sideways, and she said it, the, 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 the crack was so narrow till she turned it to a little sheet of paper to slip through the crack. Oh, but when she got in there, she said, my mom, it was heaven. She said it was so beautiful. She said, the angel said, well, you can't stay here. So we had to turn back sideways and go back. So she asked, she says, uh, can we stand and see who coming from behind that gate? And when they came from behind that gate, she was younger. She was holding her nose. She was saying, P-U, P-U. Oh, my mom, it was stinking. It was burnt. She said, it burnt to Chris. And then I said, baby, go get your Bible. And turned it to Matthew 7, 13. I said, straight and narrow is the way. But broad and wide lead to destruction. You may be on the broad and wide gate today, but you don't have to stay on the broad and wide. Because Jesus came that you can have life and have it more abundantly. Thy kingdom come. Remember, you are in that car. You turn. You may have backslid and went that way and, 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 and spending your living with harlots or, or, or spending, or you become a whore or a prostitute or a liar or whatever you want to do. But you know that is not what you're supposed to be doing. And it's not too late. All you have to do is make a U-turn. And when you turn, see, because that GPS system on the inside of you is drawing you, is leading you. That's the Holy Ghost. See, your body is not the, is, 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 don't belongs to you anymore. The body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. You're not your own. You was bought with a price. So therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is his. Thy kingdom come on earth in your life as it is in heaven. Say, come kingdom, will of God be established in my life on earth as it is in heaven. Sickness leave my body because thy kingdom come of healing is in my body. Poverty leave my life, thy kingdom come on earth, riches in my life on earth as it is in heaven. Fear, doubt, unbelief, thy kingdom come on earth earth as it is in heaven. I have peace and joy. You come to Jesus while you have time. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. You have been listening to Faith That Works on the New Orleans Talk Network with your encouraging coach or evangelist Jill Samuels encouraging you to continue to let the kingdom of God and live and stay in the seat. Stay in Christ and let him guide and lead you and turn. May the blessings of the Lord overtake you today and may God continue to lead and guide you and you live holy unto him. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Have a blessed day. I'm going to seek out the dry.